Uh, as Babe introduced, I came from Inner Mongolia. I grew up from this, this beautiful natural land. And there was no television or computer when I was a child. So my only media input was, uh, was from nature. I listened to uh, the singing from the pine trees when the rain came. I saw the dance of the wheat field while the wind waved uh, across. I still remember when I was little, I took a pine cone back home, and, and I was surprised when I saw the pine cone actually closed up after a few days laying beside my bed. And last year, when I took a class from MIT, I learned actually it has been studied. It's called hygromorphic transformation. For the pine cone, the reversibly open and close and as the environmental relative humidity changes, and it was published in science. And there was another science paper came out actually explaining how my old friend, wheat, also does the same thing. The wheat orn can open up to disperse the seeds when the, when, when the environment is uh, humid and then close up again to protect itself. And if you dig a little bit further, you will realize how many transformations actually exist in the kingdom of plants and microorganisms. They build smart materials, they grow smart structures, and figure out smart mechanisms to try to react to environmental stimuli and try to survive, or try to let their ge next generation survive. And beyond just the slow process of growing, there are fast transformations that can happen within seconds. One of my uh, most inspiring tutors, Neri Oxman, once commented on this. Technology, one might claim, is to recapitulate biology. When we strive to design artifacts and building parts that are responsive and ever-evolving, we found we are immersed in nature's way. For me, the real question is, instead of just being inspired, or instead of just imitating what nature is behaving, can I have a deeper conversation with them? Can I try to talk to them? Or can I try to collaborate with them? Uh, with that in mind, I'm pushing a little bit uh, further or deeper from build transformation to actually grow transformation. So the new project I brought to this stage today is called Biologic. Before going into details, I'd like to introduce all my amazing collaborators. They cover the entire uh, span from science, art, technology, and engineering. And I would also love to thank my dearest tutor, Hiroshi Ishii, who has been giving great support on this project. And now it comes a little teaser. What you guessed is right. So it is a garment actuated by living cells. And indeed, this lovely cell has a name. It's called Bacillus subtilis natto cell. Um, it is a actually Asian bacteria deeply rooted in the Japanese culture. It was found thousands of years ago by a Japanese samurai during the war. And since then, it has been used to ferment natto food in Japan. This is how the food looks like. You can get them from any Asian supermarket today. And uh, in a bio lab, we accidentally found a new function of this Asian bacteria. It actually transforms. It expands and shrinks based on the relative humidity condition in the environment. And this is a reversible transformation. If we think about the concept of motor, when Tesla invented, uh, invented electricity, he also invented motor. Since then, the concept of motor has been associated with electromagnetic system. Here, I'm trying to challenge this notion. Rather than manufacturing a motor, can you grow a motor? 
So we harvested this bacteria from nature, indeed mainly from the dry rice stock, and tried to culture this bacteria in a lab. One cell can actually turn into billions of cells within 24 hours. Imagine now you can grow your actuator for free, and you can grow millions of actuators for free within a few hours. We then put them into a very high resolution, indeed nano resolution, atomic force microscope and try to observe and study the transformation behavior. As you can see, it expands up to 18% of its own body size when you modulate the relative humidity in the environment. We then created this um, high density water cell mixture and loaded on top of bioprinter we designed also back in Media Lab. Now you can start to print and deposit those bacteria on top of another film and create your own biohybrid. The micron resolution printing capability enables us to print really fine lines, and those fine lines actually program and define the transformational curvature and also orientation. The film is hypersensitive. It even reacts to the little temperature and also uh, humidity change on your skin. New Balance, the sports company, gets really excited about it and then they advised us to do a thorough analysis of your thermal and also sweat distribution on body. With all this knowledge, we developed our garment. We call it second skin. If you, if, if you think about how our skin works, um, when we are doing intensive sports, they will sweat. It's a natural process to take away your excessive heat through vaporization. In that case, to cool your body down to keep your being healthy. However, when we put our artificial cl clothes on top of it, the clothes itself is actually preventing this process from ha happening. Here, our second skin is trying to indeed help the skin rather than preventing the skin to do its own job. In a way, we are trying to create an ecosystem between the cloth and the human body. Also, another ecosystem between this microorganism as a living identity and human body as another living identity. And this is a full dance piece um, we'd like to, we'd like to um, first feature in the WIRE conference. Lovely Dell to help us do a live demonstration. It's a really short demonstration of how this garment works. So if you guys pay attention to the back, that's where all the flaps are opening. And I'm using the steam now to simulate uh, the sweat when, when you generate as you sport. And if you pay a bit of attention to the flaps, you will see they are gradually closed. So by the way, it is reversed from how a real product would work for the demo reason. So it's, it's opening by default and close up when you emit sweat. And now if you could uh, turn back to face the audience, um, especially on the right side where, where the garment actually meets the steam, it closed up.
And as she moves away, the garments will open up again. As I said, it's very sensitive, so it reacts really fast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dale, for the demo. Um, Thank you. Yes, so what's beyond garment? This magical cell, apparently it can do more. Uh, you can think about designing some living tea bag. As your tea is ready, the living tea bag will tell you. <laughs> or you can think of how you use the heat generated by the light bulb to transform a lampshade. You can also develop this little paper toy for your children. As you turn on and off a heating circuit, the little toy starts to move. You can think more than this and start to really envision what a bacteria-empowered motion can really achieve for your daily life. To reflect a little bit of my journey to interact with nature, I think the biologic project is about how we can use the nature. And what's the next step? The next step is actually how we could alter the nature, how we can work together with them while we augment them with our man-made technology. Here we are using the same bacteria. However, we are trying to add in another second function, color changing function. So imagine we plant those flowers on top of the street, maybe in China or India, and those flowers can only change red and blossom when the environmental conditions are good. So in a way, we are getting materials from nature, and then we program them, and then we redesign them. In a way, we are also re recomposing nature, however, in a way that uh, we are desiring. Human beings originally were really good at utilizing natural resources. They are seamlessly interacting with nature. Industry really drove us further away from natural <coughs> environment. I would like to think today is actually having the technology that brings us back to nature, indeed bring us back to the very original form of life, a single cell a cell that can incorporate input, computation, and output. In a way, you can think about the cell as a computer. And actually, you can think about the cell as, as a system that's beyond computer, because it can also grow, it can die, it can duplicate. Would, would it be lovely if you can, have, you can have your daughter's shoe that grow bigger as your daughter is becoming older? Or would it be poetic to think when you are forced to throw away your old lovely historical objects, they just roll out of the door and really dissolve in nature as they die? So with that, I'd like to end my talk. Um, and I'd like to thank all the audiences, but I also would like to thank nature who really lift up my imagination to the next level. Thank you.